So, this is a presentation of neurolytic malignant syndrome, serotonin syndrome, and malignant hyperthermia. So, because it's very difficult to differentiate the three, and it's, it's a challenge when you have a questions on the UCMLEs. So, I thought it would be nice to present this. So, I actually put a, a question. So a 40 year old man is brought to the emergency department after being found talking to himself in the park. When authorities ask him to leave, he become agitated and combat combated, saying he was destined to lead and he was to wait in the park for the sign. So the patient was psychotic. The patient admit not sleeping for the past week. He stops John from topic to topic and he appears distractible, disorganized and unable to care for himself. The patient is admitted to the hospital and started on daily aloperidol and valproid. So we have a patient with clear signs of schizophrenia. Over the next week, he becomes significantly calmer, although he continues to believe that he will lead a spiritual revolution. He's sleeping six hours a night. He's better able to focus. 10 days after admission, he fails to come out of his room for breakfast. Nursing staff members find him lying in bed, confused, sweating, and stiff. Vital signs are temperatures are high temperature, high blood pressure, high pulse, high respiratory rate. As a precaution, all medications are stopped. If the patient fails to improve, which of the following medication is most appropriate to administer at this time? So we have to we have to see what is this. So elevated blood pressure, elevated temperature. That's that's called in a autonomic disability, which means an increase sympath sympathetic activity. You have a patient with history of taking antipsychotics, and he's rigid. So this would be we have to recognize that this is neurolytic malignant syndrome. So how should we treat? We have the benzotropin, cicloheptamine, bromocryptidine, fiostimine, propanol, and succinylcholine. And the answer would be benzotropin. It's, it's very easy. So whenever we have a rigid patient with, with apparent malignant, neurolytic malignant syndrome, we should use benzotropin. So the, the most common feature is fever, confusion, muscle rigidity, and autonomic instability. Something very, very extremely interesting is the fever. First, first generation antipsychotics like aloperidol generate great fever, but second generation like, like ket ketiapine or ris risperidone doesn't produce as much fever as first generations. Uh, nevertheless, we always think that we have to give the benzotropin first. The, the first thing we can do is stop the medication or actually giving benzodiazepines. That's what I was reading. And hydration is very important. So, like I say, this all the this is all the the medications that can produce neurolytic malignant syndrome for generation. And remember that that fact: first generation antipsychotics produce more fever than second generation. Okay. So, what's the most the most common feature is mental status changes, being rigid as a as a pipe and the hyperthermia and the autonomic instability. If you want to compare serotonin syndrome, malignant hyperthermia and neurolytic malignant syndrome, the thing that they have in common is autonomic instability. This won't help you differentiate. They all have tachycardia, hypertension, tachypnea. The fever won't help you as much. The classical or the mental status, the thing that will help you differentiate is that the patient is rigid as a pipe, very rigid. The sick, uh, this is this is specific. They have leukocytosis. 
uh, sometimes we forget. We, we try to focus on the CK. And usually this case is between 1,000 and 100,000. You want to differentiate from the others. Serotonin syndrome have, can have elevated levels of CK, but usually less. And malignant hyperthermia, it varies, but it's usually higher. The leukocytosis is only specific for NMS. You also have increased liver enzymes, and you can, you can also have hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia, hypernatremia, but those are less common features. And we actually have a patient once in the hospital, and you can use this diagnostic criteria. And you might think you, you know what is neurolytic malignant syndrome, but you don't, because I remember we have this patient and he actually had the score of 100. But is I don't know if you have ever seen a patient with neurolytic malignant syndrome. They move a lot. I mean, you, and you're thinking they reach it as a five. That means that they don't move, but that you will be mistaken. If a patient is reached as a five, he can still move because this patient was moving his arms and legs, but in, a, in an extended position. So everybody was saying that that must be serotonin because the patient is moving. So that's very important to differentiate. Re being rigid doesn't mean that you are unable to move. So the management, if it's mild, you start with benzodiazepines. Don't, don't forget that. The dantrolene, we use it later. The dantrolene, we use it only benzodiazepines, those doesn't work. And if you have refractory treatment, we use either bromocryptidine or amantadine. Because remember, bromocryptidine is a dopamine agonist and amantadine is also a dopamine agonist. And this, so, but what people always forget or don't know is that you start with benzodiazepines. And this is also true for serotonin syndrome. You start with benzodiazepines. So malignant hyperthermia. If you want to differentiate from the other, this is this is an acute condition. Neurolytic malignant syndrome takes time to develop, takes take days to develop. Malignant hyperthermia is a surgical complication. So you are in the operating room and the patient develops malignant hyperthermia. Neurolytic malignant syndrome can can be can you give a patient the neuroleptic and you have to wait for this to occur. You have to wait for days. Malignant hyperthermia is something is a intrasurgical complication. It's something that occurs instantly. And if you want more help to differentiate the elevation of CK is more than in NMS. Remember, in NMS is from 10,000 to 100, in malignant hyperthermia is usually more. They also have acidosis, hyperkalemia. The treatment is the same, it's dantrolene. In this case, you don't start with benzodiazepine. You, you give the dantrolene first. The rigidity, look, look at it, they have rigidity on the masseters. And the, Potassium was elevated in NMS, but here is, is a lot. And actually you have to give calcium gluconate to stabilize the membranes in order so they don't have arrhythmias. Uh, and this is common values that you find, the creatinine kinase, the myoglobin elevated in the urine, the serum potassium more than six, and hypercapnia, that's, that's relevant too elevated levels of carbon dioxide. So we're going to read a case of serotonin syndrome to have a more ideal clinical picture. So we have a 30 year old woman is brought to the emergency department by her sister after developing acute anxiety, headache, nausea, and vomiting while eating dinner. The patient has no history of migraine, hypertension, or diabetes. She has no, no food allergy, but does have a history of seasonal allergies treated with defendramine, 
an antihistamine. The patient has a long history of major depressive disorder and panic attacks and has poor response to several antidepressants. For the past year, she has been treated with citalopram, which she discontinued a week ago. Yesterday, she started taking phenelcine, a MAO inhibitor. On arrival, the patient is agitated, disorientated, diaphoretic, and tremulous. The temperature is high, blood pressure is high, pulse is high, respiratory rate is high. Physical examinations show dilated pupils and bilateral tremors. The tendon reflex are plus three bilateral. Which of the following is the most common cause of these findings? So this is serotonin syndrome, right? So you have to realize that this patient also has increased blood pressure, the tachypnea, and the patient with NMS also had this. So this is very, is common in both. So, so this don't help you differentiate between the both conditions. And you see the temperature is elevated. This temperature is not above 40 like an MS, but remember what I say, if you're using a second generation antipsychotic, the temperature is not that high. So what help you to differentiate is this, the reflex. The reflex are increased, but sometimes it's difficult to assess reflex if you are a newbie. Uh, something that help you is you see this patient moving, uh, is the clonus. And uh, if you're a good doctor, you have, you have to know how to elicitate a clonus. That's in, an important maneuver that a neurologist should know. This is a, besides that, this is a specific sign, the diarrhea. If you, you use your stethoscope, something uncommon on neurologists, you need to hear the bowel movements and the, they are increased the bowel sounds. That's, and they have midrasis. That's something uncommon in, in MS. So the midrasis, the hyperactive bowel sounds and the clonus is something specific. Uh, besides that, uh, the, 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 the causes are the interactions with antidepressant and these two drugs are important, tramadol and, and linezolid. Uh, the, the management is benzodiazepines, and this drug is very important, citroheptadine. But you can only use citroheptadine when, when everything fails. If the, if the hydratation is not working, the benzodiazepines don't work, you use the citroheptadine, which, is, uh, which blocks the serotonin receptors. Please don't forget that linezolid and tramadol are medicines that can cause serotonin syndrome, especially the tramadol, because linezolid uh, is something that people usually know if you're taking the boards. Tramadol is something that people usually forget. Tramadol can cause serotonin syndrome. Um, actually, there is a criteria for serotonin syndrome. The only one that doesn't have a criteria is malignant hyperthermia. This is called the Hunter criteria. The Hunter criteria, you have one of the followings. I don't want to read a lot, but basically you have to have either clonus or hyperreflexia. So it's very important for you as a neurologist to know how to elicitate a clonus. So to sum up, this is the most important part. Please don't forget, NMS developing over the days to weeks is not an acute condition. Serotonin syndrome develops over 24 hours. And malignant hyperthermia is an intrasurgical complication. Uh, NMS results on average on nine days. So if you, someone has NMS, it's going to stay for a long period of time while serotonin syndrome results usually in 24 hours. So if you have patients, you're not sure if she has serotonin, serotonin syndrome or NMS. Uh, it has been with symptoms for four days. It's very improbable that it's serotonin. And remember, it's malignant hyperthermia is usually severe. Um, and that's it, thank you.